Hey coders, welcome to another video on JavaScript for complete beginners. In this video, we're going to be talking about looping, which involves for loops, while loops, and do while loops. So if you watched the last video where we kind of talked about flow control, let's go ahead and set up that same program which just runs iteratively from start to finish with no variation or branching. Now let's say some of the nodes in the center have some type of functionality or logic which makes sense to repeat over and over again. For instance, let's say we have a list of students or something and we need to check the grades and determine if they pass or fail or not. Well, this would involve looping, right? Because you have a list or an array of something and you need to traverse all of them to calculate some output. In order to achieve this with the program flow, we need to have one of the statements kind of go back to the previous statement to re-execute the same code over and over again until we reach a certain breaking point. So in this case, let's just say we want to count to the number five. So we want to go to the finish of the program if C is greater than five. And then if C is less than or equal to five, we continuously go back to the statement before to execute it. So to start off, let's make the program variable C equals to zero, right when the program starts. And then directly before it hits the finish statement, let's go ahead and increment C by one each time. So if we were to flow through this, um, this graph, we can see that C is zero and then it'll go to this next statement. It'll hit the increment statement where C will then become one. And then again, it will continue to do that same logic, that same loop where C now becomes two, and then three, and then four, and then five, until finally we reach a point in the flow control where C is now six, and therefore we hit the finish node or statement and our program finishes executing. So this is a good visual representation of how looping in general works using flow code or flow control. So let's go ahead and start using our editor to demonstrate this further. All right, the first way you can do looping is with a do while loop, which it's going to correlate to that last diagram I just um, showed you in the video. So to start off, the syntax for a do while loop starts with the keyword do followed by curly braces, followed by the keyword while in some parentheses. And of course, inside here, you're going to use a Boolean expression like we learned in a past tutorial. So in this case, let's go ahead and just make C less than five. Sorry, C less than or equal to five. We can declare C up here, set it equal to zero. And then at the very end, we could just print out done. And then like in that flow control diagram, I'll just go ahead and increment C by one. I don't know if I cover this yet, but C++ just means increment the value by one. So every time this runs, C will be at one, or C will be incremented to one, and then to two, and then to three, and then to four, or whatever. So just to also demonstrate what's going on, we can say we are in the loop. C is, and then print out the value of C. Go ahead and run this. So to kind of walk you through this line by line, we first start off with C equals to zero. We hit the do statement, which doesn't really do anything. It's more of a keyword so that behind the scenes, it knows where to go back to. So for instance, this loop knows to go back to this statement and start executing when the loop repeats. So then the second statement that gets executed is this console log, which is gonna print out zero. We are in the loop, C is zero. We increment C here, and then finally we check. If this is true, we need to go back to the top and increment the loop again, or run the loop one more time. So C is one, we hit this, is one less than five? Yes, so we go back to the top, which is why this prints out one. And then again, we do it again, print out two, print out three, print out four, print out five. And then at this point, C++ will make five become six, which means that this is false. And finally, we break out of the loop here. So that is the format of a do while loop. It's probably the most basic. The next one we're gonna go on to is the while loop. So keeping the same variables and whatnot, we can go ahead and just kind of change the structure of this. The while loop is basically the same thing, except for there's no do keyword. So if I were to run this now, 
you see it prints out the exact same output. Basically, because this what this is doing is the same thing, just written in a kind of a different way or a different format. So again, we first check is C less than five. If true, we go into this and run this. We then increment C to one. And then when we hit the end of this while curly brace, it's going to go back to the top and check it again. Is one less than five? Yes. So we go to this. We continuously do that until two, three, four, and then finally we hit five. So at this point, C++ will become six. We will go back to the top. Is six less than or equal to five? No. So we break and go to the done statement down here. So those loops, very simple. We have the do while loop and the while loop. They do pretty much the same thing, but just a different way to kind of structure it. So the last way you can do looping is with a for loop. Now the syntax for a for loop is you start with the keyword for, and then the break condition, or the condition where you continuously loop until it ends, starts in the center. And then the very end is where you can increment. So we don't need to do the C++ anymore because we can increment it at the very end. And then the first segment of the for loop, we can actually declare C up here if we want to. So I don't know if I really explained that too well, so I'll go back. The syntax for for loop is the for keyword followed by three segments separated by semicolons. So the first segment, we can declare variables which are scoped to the for loop. The second statement is our break condition, our you know, the condition, the Boolean expression where we continuously loop until it's false or continuously loop while it's true. And then finally, we have our increment statement, which is the third segment after the semicolon, which basically just increments or does whatever statement that you want at the end of the for loop. So if we were to run this one now, again, we get the exact same output. And that's because we first hit the statement, C is equal to zero. Is C less than or equal to five? Well, yes, zero is less than or equal to five. So then we print out the console log. And then after the very end, when we hit this curly brace, we go back up and we increment C++. So then C becomes one. Is C less than or equal to five? Yes, so we run this. And then we go to three, the four to five. Finally, we hit this, C becomes six. Is C less than or equal to five? No, so we break out the loop in general and just go to this done statement. So that basically wraps up the three different ways you can do looping. The do while, the while loop, and the for loop. Now all of them kind of require you to memorize the syntax and just understand it. So if you feel like you're confused at any point, first make sure you know how to write this off the top of your head. And then if you need to kind of map back, just remember that flow control diagram that we did. And all those loops are doing the exact same logic for the most part, that the diagram is doing. So that wraps up how you do looping in JavaScript. As a recap, we covered do while loops, we covered while loops, and we also covered for loops. If you have any feedback or suggestions on how I can make my videos better, feel free to leave me a comment or send me a message. All right, stay tuned for the next videos. Thanks for watching.